from the ancient world. In the Olympic Games, which were held every four years at Olympia in Greece, the way the Greek city-states always sat, they all sat in their own sections. For instance, the Athenians would be in one section and the Epidaurians would be in another and so forth. So on one particularly hot, hot day, when the stadium was packed, an old man came in just by himself into the stadium and he was looking for a seat and nobody would give him a seat. And he passed like through the Athenian section and nobody got up at all. He moved into the Argive section and nobody got up. And the stadium, as he started to walk, began to jeer him and make fun of him and hoot at him. And he passed on to the Theban section and nobody got up again and the jeers got louder and louder. And finally he crossed into the Spartan section. And as soon as his foot crossed the line, every Spartan stood up at once to offer him his, their seat. And at once the stadium broke into applause and cheers across the whole stadium. And one of the onlookers was heard to say, you see, the Greeks know what is right, but only the Spartans practice it. Now, it's interesting that Sparta was unlike any other Greek city. There were hundreds of Greek city-states, but Sparta was the only one that practiced this kind of hardcore society that they, that they did. And all the other states agreed that this was the best type of society, the most just type of society, where people flourished the most and where they were the strongest. But nobody was willing, no other city was willing to make the hardcore changes. So how did the Spartans do it? Where did it all come from? It all came from one man named Lycurgus, who was sort of the George Washington of Sparta. And at a time in the past that was so remote that they used to say of him that nobody could say for sure whether he was a man or a god. He instituted these reforms that made Sparta Sparta. And here were some of the reforms. First thing he did was he outlawed money because he wanted people to pursue virtue instead of wealth. And one of the things he did was like the equivalent of a nickel was a lump of iron that had been dipped in vinegar so that it was useless to anything else that was like the size of a bowling ball. So that was how he got rid of money. The second thing he did was he outlawed all trades and professions except that of warrior. The third thing he did was he took all of the land in the, in the region of Sparta called Lacedaemon and he broke it down into 9,000 equal shares, one for every warrior in the army. So that, and he decreed that people would no longer be called citizens, but peers or equals. Another thing he did was he instituted the, uh, the common mess. He outlawed any Spartan warrior, any man in the army, which was from 18 to 60, from eating at home with his wife and children. Instead, you had to dine in the common mess, which would be like 14 to 18 men who were all part of the unit that you fought with in the army. And they had a sign on the door as you walked in and it said, out this door, nothing. Meaning everything that was said, like Las Vegas, stayed there in the common mess. And one of the things that was really smart, I think, about this thing was he, he made each common mess go from the youngest to the oldest. So you'd have men that were 60 years old, 40 years old, 30 years old, down to the 18 year old new recruits. And one of the other huge things that like Hergis did was he instituted the agoge, the upbringing. And this was the education of a young Spartan boy where the Spartan boy would be taken away from his parents at age seven and would train with other boys entirely all the way through until they were 18 and then joined the army as an official warrior. Here's one story about Lycurgus to give you a sense of who the man was. And this, by the way, all comes from a, a book I highly recommend, Plutarch's Life of Lycurgus. Plutarch's Life of Lycurgus. Um, Plutarch was a Roman in the first century AD, and he wrote books, lives, not biographies, but lives, where he would pair a famous Roman with a famous Greek like he would pair Alexander the Great with Julius Caesar. But his life of Lycurgus, it's short, it's like 20 pages long. If you really wanna learn more about this, it's a great book. But here's the story of Lycurgus, the true Lycurgus. When he was instituting these reforms, a lot of people in Sparta were unhappy with this, particularly the rich people who had a lot of acreage and had to give it up when Lycurgus broke everything into 9,000 equal shares. 
And one young man who was really pissed off about this attacked him in the marketplace with a staff and put out his eye. And so the magistrates immediately arrested this young guy and they were ready to put him to death right on the spot. And like Herger said, no, 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 no. He said, here's what I want you to do with this young guy. I want you to assign him to live with me in my house as my assistant. And so they made the young man do that. And when he began to live in close quarters with Lycurgus and the family, and he saw what an honorable man and what a humble man and what a great man he was and how his only care was really for the city and not for himself, he became absolutely devoted to Lycurgus and remained so for the whole rest of his life. So this was Lycurgus who made Sparta, Sparta.